Well, we've got Ark Dreamer on the line here just now. How are you today? Hi, I'm pretty good. Got a third vaccination today, so oh, hopefully wow. coronavirus is going to go away <laughs> from me. Yeah, hopefully. As far as possible. <laughs> yeah. Now, you've got a new book called Seven Deadly Cardinals. So what's the overall premise behind the book? Uh, so basically, I began writing it when I was in my depressive state, genuinely. Mm. Uh, but as I started to learn more about myself and how to manage that through psychological and therapy stuff, uh, I decided to put all of that as like different stories. So mm. that's why the seven deadly cardinals are just genuinely seven different stories of mm. seven different ways of mental struggles of people and situations which you encounter when um, you're psychologically and emotionally like being victimized. So yeah. that's the horrid idea of it. Yeah. And writing seven different stories in the one book, does that make things easier or harder than writing just one story the whole time? At first, I was thinking to put like seven different characters into like one setting, but then mm. my brain just went into the sole moment of like but telling seven different stories would be way better because yeah. um, in these different stories they have different settings they have different um, kind of like portrayal of social issues and culture uh, timelines sort of and that's why you can see something that sort of remotely uh, looks like 1970s or 1940s time and something that's nowadays uh, mm. so yeah <laughs> And of course, the title, I suppose, kind of reveals the fact that there are seven different stories because it's called Seven Deadly Cardinals. Yeah, um, it, it just kind of like brewed from the sole idea that, that we all know that there's uh, seven deadly sins. Yeah. So I decided to go from the opposite of um, cardinals, but making them the evil thing eventually so like throughout the whole of the book uh by torturing my characters <laughs> uh, <laughs> i went from uh having uh people characters that embody the goodness of the seven cardinals and then through um, a lot of strain and uh, torture and emotional pressure and situational problems they basically fall into the opposite category of this um, opposite sin. Mm. So Yeah, that's true, yeah. because on the contents, it sort of says the good thing forward slash the bad thing, like, for example, humility forward slash pride. That's true. So basically, you get the humility and the person that embodies humility and how they act and how they live with it, how they uh, interact with their community, and then how that can uh, backfire and put them into a situation where they yeah, eventually have no other way but to just slither into the opposite side mm. of full things. So Yeah, that's quite an interesting concept. Is it so easy to completely go to the opposite side, is it? Actually not. I mean, mm. um, my characters, like some of them, they're being portrayed as more um, emotionally stable and more uh, boundary setting and tough. But yeah. uh, at the same time, that's why I just want to... I just went full blown mode of like evil creator to literally make it as best worse as possible for them so that uh, like even the reader could feel that even though you get this situation where you seemingly have options hmm. everything that's around uh, around you like from uh, social circle to friends to family they just pressure you into this like one solution you get although there's other ways to solve it but like there's just like one narrow path they just like it all pushes you in yeah. so that's kind of like the storytelling i was like drawn to yeah so. and what's interesting is that each chapter is a different length like one is only 16 pages and some are 40 there's not much consistency i guess is there uh some stories uh for me were a bit easier to tell yeah uh but some others <laughs> i just went in lengths because um when I was telling some of the stories, I thought that, okay, it would be easier to go with it and it would be easier to play it off. But the more I wrote the character and the more I wrote the setting, the more I understood that this character is definitely going to get out of this. And that's not what I'm planning on doing. Yeah. So I just went 
further and further into complicating everything for this character for them to end up exactly at uh, the point where I wanted them to be. So yeah. that's why some stories are shorter, some stories end up being longer. Yeah, and rather appropriately, I think, Greed is the longest story. So if you're greedy in the terms of you like lots of reading, then that chapter's going to work out well for you. <laughs> yeah, for me, uh, Greed was the longest one. And when I finished that, I was uh, literally thinking to myself, what have I done? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but that just got me thinking that basically with all these stories, the first one, um, it was actually like short, so short, mm. in fact, at first, before the editing session, it was barely uh, six pages. Yeah. And then after I went into check it i was like no honey that's not that that's not what i want for you and that's not what you want for me so let's let's do the good thing yeah. which ended up being the bad thing of expanding the chapter and just changing it wholeheartedly into something way more gruesome but I enjoyed that. Yeah. Well, where did the idea for the book originally come from? Uh, the idea came from me at some point online seeking through these um, endless... Basically, it was like endless mind-numbing scrolling. Yeah. And uh, that just landed me into the kind of like the opposites. There was... Uh, can't truly remember what, what exactly was there, but uh, it was an article regarding opposites. So mm. there was like oppression and freedom of speech and there's like many other opposites. And I was like, hey, <laughs> what if? And at the same time, um, a friend of mine was also playing some computer games and um, I was told many times that oh, it's easier to portray the character that goes from, like, evil and they, like, make him a good guy afterwards. And I was like, but how about we do it the opposite? Yeah. That and <laughs> that just ended up being the whole lot. <laughs> and how did you get into writing in the first place? Oh, God. <laughs> uh, <laughs> when I was a kid, I was uh, genuinely writing a lot in my uh, notebooks. Mm. And um, at the time, I was like, yeah, it's so cool. And I was like 10 years old. I was still a kid. I was like writing about some detective stuff inspired by like endless movies in 90s and once i got so embarrassed because my grandmother at one of the family gatherings she pulled out my notebook mm. and that's the moment when i felt oh no <laughs> and she read out loud one of my stories and i was like god why no and she was like but you're good and that was like the most biggest embarrassment of my life at the time <laughs> uh but <laughs> But she encouraged me to write. So when I was in high school and going further in um, college and everything else, and I said, like, OK, I feel like I, I should pursue this because, like, I'm good at it. Mm. And that's when my family was like, hell no, drop it. You need to be a lawyer. You need yeah. psychologist, something serious. This is not good. And then I went into art to, well, <laughs> I don't know, be, <laughs> be an asshole. Yeah. A bit of that. Yeah. But eventually I still pursued my writing because I'm like, yeah, you better tell what you want, but I'm still going to do it. Mm, yeah. And it's kind of embarrassing, somebody picking up your stories and reading them, but it could have been worse if it was like a private diary or something. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> that actually also happened with me oh. when... Um, yeah, so I had a diary at some point in life when I was like 16, 17. Uh, a teen with teen angst and like the mm. troubles of life. Yeah. The maximalism issues running in your veins. And I once had my dad just come into my room when I was not there. And he found the diary, although I thought I hid it in a pile of books on my table. I thought mm. it was like invisible. <laughs> Apparently it was not. Oh. So he read uh, a few chapters and then he like put like he hid it back again. But he put a note on my table saying, please hide your diary better the next time. And just don't like say out loud things to your auntie for, <laughs> for what you wrote in there. And I'm like, oh my God, no. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Although the thing is, though, if he didn't mention anything specific that was in there, maybe you never actually read it 
and it was just a sort of joke thing. Who knows? Oh, if it was, it's it's like an evil thing that stretches out for years now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. And that's why you should put a padlock on it, although I don't know if that's really a possible thing. No, padlock. It, it would be nice, though, but then yeah. it would be, like, honestly, like, uh, an eye-catcher if you see one of those. You're like, now I want to know. Yeah. What makes you put one on those? Like, what are you hiding? Mm, that's a yeah, good point. Yeah, no. Yeah. My besties would be all over it. Yeah. At some point, I would just, like, walk into the room and they're just, like, trying to crack it open with, like, knife or something going, like, hey, we want to know. <laughs> no. no. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to try my luck in that. Yeah. So what other books have you been working on? Because you've got another one coming up, right? Absolutely. Um, so the other book that I've been working on is called Parallels. And mm. uh, that's, like... I think that's one of the biggest books I had since I was a kid and I started to write it back in 2008 and the whole book is based on the theory of multiverse, quantum physics, mm. um, biology and many other things but it's it's kind of like a mixture of uh, fiction and science fiction in general. Yeah. So it like incorporates a different sort of stuff so I was going ballistics with it yeah. and then I rewrote it about five times wow. and now I am on my last try of redoing it as I decided to go f not from third person perspective for this book but for the first person perspective so now I have about eight main characters whoa and I'm asking the god why <laughs> that's a big number of main characters but there's a lot to tell because uh, in that book you get like the main character who's a um, mad scientist so to put some uh, like lab rats hmm. of people that he has amassed and how the stories evolve from this uh, evil scientist trying to get the world in his hands, but the other is trying to not get him the world and trying to save the world from his evil grip. Yeah. So a lot of studies were made for that, including neuroscience, to, to put it more accurately. So, yeah. yeah. Is that a book you can still enjoy, even if the science goes way above your head? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, there, there's plenty of uh, fantasy parts with uh, the gods and the magic and the, a bit uh, of, of the fun of psychopaths in the story and some sassy remarks and sarcasm so <laughs> it's pretty digestible <laughs> yes and what is it you enjoy so much about writing books if indeed you actually do oh god um i love books that have more uh, depth to them so mm. might sound crazy though on another hand because i i consume a lot of information from um, mangas to web novels to like actual books physical ones by some interesting authors and yeah. as long as it grips me and there's something like deep just not like action 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 but there's some like psychological under meaning to it or something you can relate to in the real life and grips you emotionally that's like the top brass sellers for me like something yeah. that I, i'm like snapping my cards on the table going like give me <laughs> take my money just give me yeah and you also love cats as well have you ever written a book about cats oh god um i once tried doing that mm. and it was back when i was a teen and there was me and my uh, two best friends and we all had cats so apparently we're all crazy cat ladies eventually in old life yeah. and we tried to manage to write that but um all of our cats have character and mm. even though we we're trying to write like a witchy story about three witches uh i gave up on that because it's uh, it's hard <laughs> it was hard to communicate with them because we lived in uh, different countries mm. and even though they sent me the pictures of their cats i was like yeah but i cannot touch them so yeah eventually i just gave up because i focused more on uh, other sorts of writing and then studies so that was a bit of a mess and then i just yeah, yeah. <laughs> sad attempt yeah well where are we able to check out your current book seven deadly cardinals so seven deadly cardinals is available on amazon yeah it's internationally available and right now until uh some bit of time is going to be free for Donald, so Ooh. people can actually read it for free. <laughs> yeah, that's but uh, after a while, it's going to be back to its uh, usual small price of pain of bleeding heart on the page. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's that. Well, thanks very much for joining us here on the show today. It's been great to talk to you. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a blast, although I'm nervous and I know it, but <laughs> thank you so much for me for dealing with me today. So <laughs> thank you and, and have a nice day also. Many thanks to all those listeners. <laughs>